from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here with theCUBE at Amazon Web Service reInvent. I'm John Furrier, my host Lauren Cooney here, breaking down all the action. A lot of announcements coming out of Amazon Web Services. A lot of killer new technologies, but also the IT game is changing. We have two great guests from Cisco Systems, Dave Cope, who's the Senior Director of Cloud Market Development, and Kip Compton, Senior Vice President, Cloud Platform and Solutions. We got the big cheese here, we got the marketing development here. The Cisco story, I tweeted just about an hour ago that you got, your story is really aligned with Amazon. You had a recent announcement. The holy trinity of storage, networking, and compute is never going to go away, but it's changing. This is absolutely a big pivotal moment with on-premises activity. You guys are on-premises king at Cisco. <laughs> How is this changing your business with AWS? Well, no, it's been an incredible year. Uh, Dave and I were just reflecting on it as, as we got ready for AWS, and it's a year where we started with people questioning hybrid, multi-cloud was kind of new, Kubernetes looked like it was going to take off, and I think every major cloud provider now has announced a Kubernetes service. Hybrid is described as the new normal, um, and of course, Kubernetes and containers are an almost ideal technology for things like hybrid and multi-cloud, so it's been an incredible year, and you mentioned the announcement we made three weeks ago with our hybrid Kubernetes solution on AWS, and we've just gotten incredible interest in that. Uh, a lot of uh, people interested in that solution because most enterprises, as exciting as public cloud is and as fast as they can move in that environment, have things that for whatever reason are on-prem and need to stay on-prem for some period of time. So really being able to bring those environments together is critical. You know, I got to say, Kip, I, I'm really impressed with Cisco's um, business model uh, evolution. Obviously I've been a big fan from day one, routers power the network. We know, the, I just interviewed John Chambers just two weeks ago, great to see the, uh, you know, the legend there. But what a great business model Cisco had with networking. Moving up the stack has always been a challenge, but since DevNet and DevNet Create, you started to see that the DevNet developer community, the Cisco ecosystem, was really gravitating towards cloud. Network guys are like fickle. You either win them or you don't. They're, they, they hold on to their, but they, the, the network, they got to protect it. Right. But cloud somehow changed the dynamic, and cloud native, what is the dynamic there? Because you guys have now stated publicly, developers, cloud native, the Kubernetes announcement, you see a world where the network is borderless. Yep. But hybrid is the standard, what you call it, whatever you want, cloud or hybrid, yep. it is what it is. How has cloud changed Cisco so much? Well, I mean, I, I think not just cloud, but you know, the network has changed. You know, all of our customers, as they're adopting DevOps, and, and I think it's 54% of enterprises have begun a DevOps journey because it just drives innovation at a much higher pace. And we're finding in almost every industry, in order to compete, Companies have to be able to move fast and deliver incredible experiences mm -hmm. to their customers and their employees in the form of apps. And DevOps is the way to do that. And to do DevOps, you need a fully automated infrastructure. And so that, I think, is one of the reasons why DevNet, our developer program, has grown so much. We're really excited to see DevNet pass 500,000, half a million members of DevNet, right? And many of these are networking engineers who are learning how to program on Cisco equipment as we've added APIs across our portfolio and brought programmable controllers uh, into the picture as well. So we're seeing that then mesh very well with cloud. Because obviously DevOps is not just for on-prem, but it's for cloud and it's for hybrid. And as we bring a fully automated infrastructure on-prem, that matches up very well with fully automated infrastructures like AWS and enables these hybrid use cases and DevOps in a hybrid model. That's great, and I think uh, what you're doing with you know, open source technologies is just phenomenal as well. Um, talk about some of the use cases that you guys see across the industry. If you can mention customer names, that's awesome. <laughs> if you can't, I get it. But you know, I'd, love, I'd love to hear more about how they're applying the solution today. You know, I think there's a number of use cases. I think one thing that's been really interesting, Kip reflected on sort of coming out of last year into this realization that multi-cloud was real. And I think we also, there was this realization that it wasn't about just saving money to move to the cloud. That now it was about going to different cloud environments to leverage innovation that could be occurring in, in different environments. So one of the use cases we see is, you know, how do we maybe develop a new application on a cloud that has a unique service maybe like machine learning or AI that I want to leverage. 
we're starting to see other use cases where people are realizing it's not about lifting and shifting or moving applications, but now I want to take an on-premise resource and maybe give it a facelift with a new cool capability that resides on a different cloud. All of that by having sort of common management, policy-based governance are some of the use cases that we see. Certainly DevOps is a big one. At the end of the day, we talked about developers. At the end of the day, developers want their apps to be able to move into production. And so with DevOps, the cloud, we're starting to see this, this overlap between developers and IT ops now working together to be able to ensure that these new applications can be put into production across many different environments. What's the biggest challenge you guys see customers having? What problem are they trying to solve? Networking you on the network, networking's not going away, it's evolving. What's the big challenge that your buyers and your customers have right now? Well, I mean, I'll, maybe I'll say a few words that yeah. Dave can add as well. You know, um, networking and security regularly show up at the top of any sort of survey about what's difficult with cloud. And that's, we're very fortunate that those are areas where we have very deep portfolios and can solve a lot of customer problems. You know, it's very interesting to me, and I mentioned this in my talk this morning, but a study we did with um, IDC on cloud maturity found that only 14% of enterprises had an optimized cloud strategy. And what that means is 86% are trying to improve their cloud strategy and are looking for solutions and things that they can solve. So it's, it's an incredibly um, fertile area for us to help our customers really take advantage of their on-prem assets, but also uh, multiple clouds in, the, in a multi-cloud world. I think one of the realizations is the cloud is not like the cloud, it's, it's multiple public clouds, it's private clouds, virtual private clouds. And so even traditional disciplines like security, network management, when you're trying to do that across environments that you both control and don't control, they take on a whole new complexion. And so that's some of the challenges and the opportunities I think that companies are looking for across the cloud today. Well, I think it's an interesting story too with Cisco because the strength has really emerged in the security arena and that is the one thing that people are most concerned about That's right. when they're using Kubernetes. So I think just phenomenally, um, you know, that's, that's really something that's coming together nicely. Um, you know, would you say that, um, you know, are you guys working with a security team and, uh, and really kind of making things more secure for folks to make them more comfortable in utilizing this solution? Or can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, no, we are certainly working with a security team. And that's, uh, as a former Cisco employee, I know you're familiar with Cisco, but one of the things that's different about cloud for us is that every part of Cisco is involved in our cloud strategy. Right, so as you know from Cisco and a lot of customers who work with Cisco know, we tend to have uh, big groups inside the company that focus on certain technologies, be it data center or networking uh, or, or whatever. Um, cloud is across all of those. And a big part of what Dave and I do and the group that I lead does is work across all of those groups to make sure that things come together for our customers. That's so awesome. for instance, the um, solution we announced three weeks ago uh, on AWS for hybrid Kubernetes actually works with our security products and has StealthWatch Cloud from our security group integrated in the solution to give consistent security across the AWS EKS environment and the on-prem uh, data center environment. So we're very much stitching security into That's everything awesome. we do. That when you guys talk to customers, what do you say to them when they say, okay, I'm a Cisco shop, we have a lot of on-premise, I'm looking at cloud, what do I do? How do you describe the ideal architecture and playbook for really working with cloud? For the, give the customer the best choice, all the stuff that they want, what's your recommendation? How do you talk with that customer? What do you recommend? Yeah, you know, I don't know if there's a single path. I mean, that's one thing we found is, it's, I hate to say it's complicated, but every customer has a different set of apps, maybe different constraints, depending on what industry they're in or what part of the world they're in, in terms of data protection. They may have different on-prem estates, you know, applications that maybe they can't move, like an old ERP system, or maybe simply investments that they want to continue to get value out of. So a lot of times we end up engaging with them or one of our Cisco partners ends up engaging with them on sort of a cloud advisory process to understand their environment. But you know, there, there are definitely some trends that we're seeing that, that I think Dave and I can talk about. You know, one is I've seen a lot more interest in how you develop new experience is in applications. And Dave mentioned it, but a big shift towards accelerating innovation with cloud as opposed to minimizing cost. And I think this is a logical maturation as people see that as a lever to be more competitive. Yeah. Um, 
but really every customer has a slightly yeah. different journey. I mean, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Scale, automation, moving from the command line interface <laughs> right. to dashboards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with AP, all about APIs in between, by yeah. the way. All right, guys, give us the final word here on what's next. You guys got a great deal going on with, the, with Amazon. Love this Kubernetes announcement. Yeah. As you know, we've been high on Kubernetes uh, since it started, but recently there's a lot going on there under the covers, containers, good for workloads, great for inter-clouding or multi-clouding or hybrid clouding, yep. whatever word they're calling it these days. That's right. What's next for you guys? Give us a quick peek into the, what's coming up at Cisco Live in Barcelona, what's on the roadmap, what's your budgets look like? What's your <laughs> well, I know that like? look, and so I would definitely <laughs> like to hear Come on, like tell us the secret sauce. Well, maybe I'll just tee it up and you sure. jump in. I mean, when I, when I look at, at, at hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, a lot of the innovation we have seen was First, really about cloud management platforms, creating some degree of abstraction across clouds. And then along came containers, Kubernetes, you could develop and deploy anywhere. I think the big, the big opportunity and challenge today is all of those have been focused on the app. Now, how do we create this fluidity of, of data sources across this multi-cloud world? And that's an exciting opportunity right now. How do I not have the requirement to move big loads of data around, but access that data anywhere it resides to feed these new applications. So I think that's a big part of where hybrid cloud is going. Keep your yeah, focus, who you're hiring, what's the focus, what's coming on, what's the next deals you're going to do? Well, I mean, we're big on Kubernetes, as you can tell as well. So you're going to see continued innovation there, as well as security, you, you mentioned that. Um, we think serverless is very interesting uh, for where that could go. It's going to take some time, I think, for that to become mainstream from a, a developer perspective. Uh, but just to pile on to, to what Dave said, I mean, we, we started the year with like, oh, is hybrid or is Kubernetes, is multi-cloud, all of that seems to be a resounding yes at this yeah, point. Yeah. And we're moving from creating similar environments to really starting to integrate those environments. I think what we announced three weeks ago is a good example of where we create a single control plane between those environments, data exchange and tying that data together for hybrid, and then going from hybrid and evolving to multi-cloud, right, where we have customers already saying to us, oh, wait a second, we love your AWS announcement, we remember your Google announcement, you're giving us a common infrastructure on the on-prem side that can connect to multiple clouds. That's lowering the friction, lowering the complexity, making it easier for us, because yeah. customers are saying, look, we need to harvest all the innovation. Like, right. AWS is amazing, yeah. but you know, TensorFlow at Google is like a real thing. I mean, that's a real and deal for And they're supporting it here people. in their framework too, Amazon is. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's, so we think it's an exciting time, and you know, the pace of innovation is going to be um, I think that's the, the one thing is the future's going to be hard to predict. That's the safe you bet. You guys are on it. I'm excited to see. We've been down there, fist on the table for years. <laughs> the TCP IP is future is right in front of you. It's called Kubernetes. <laughs> really great opportunity. You guys have a good strategy. Congratulations. See how it plays out. Multi-cloud looks obvious. Pretty obvious. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks, Thanks for your insight. Thanks for the insight. Thanks for having us. Live coverage here in theCUBE. Stay with us for more after this short break. We'll be right back. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at AWS reInvent. I'm Jeffrey Lauren Cooney. Stay with us.